Synopsis of the Sixth Tablet To the incredulous leadership, Inky reveals a secret. In the Abzu, there roams a wild being akin to the Anunnaki. By augmenting its life essence with that of the Anunnaki, it can be upgraded to be an intelligent, primitive worker. Creation belongs to the father of all beginning, Enlil shouted. We will give our image only to an existing being, Nimma argued. Badly needing gold to survive, the leaders vote yes. Inki, Ninma, and Ningizita, Inki's son, begin experiments. After many failures, the perfect model, Adamu, is attained. Ninma shouts triumphantly, My hands have made it. She is renamed Ninti, Lady of Life, for her achievement. Ninki, Inki's spouse, helps fashion Tiamat, a female earthling. The earthlings, being hybrids, mate but do not procreate. Ningizita adds two essence branches to their life tree. Discovering the unapproved ongoings, Enlil expels the earthlings. To create a primitive worker by the mark of our essence to fashion him. So was Inki to the leaders, saying, The being that we need, it already exists. Thus did Inki to them a secret of the Abzu reveal. With astonishment did the other leaders Inki's words hear. By the words they were fascinated. Creatures in the Abzu there are, Inki was saying, that walk erect on two legs. Their forelegs they use as arms, with hands they are provided. Among the animals of the steppe they live, they know not dressing in garments. They eat plants with their mouths. They drink water from lake and ditch. Shaggy with hair is their whole body. Their head hair is like a lion's. With gazelles they jostle. With teeming creatures in the waters they delight. The leaders of Inky's words with amazement listened. No creature like that has ever in the Eden been seen, Enlil disbelieving said. Eons ago on Nibiru, our predecessors like that might have been, Nimma was saying. It is a being, not a creature. Nimma was saying, to behold, it must be a thrill. To the house of life, Inky led them. In strong cages there were some of the beings. At the sight of Inky and the others, they jumped up, with fists on the cage bars they were beating. They were grunting and snorting, no words were they speaking. Male and female they are, Inky was saying, male hoods and female hoods they have. Like us, from Nibiru coming, they are procreating. Ningizita, my son, their fashioning essence has tested. Akin to ours it is, like two serpents it is entwined. With their, with our life essence shall be combined, our mark upon them shall be. A primitive worker shall be created, our commands will he understand, our tools he will handle, the toil in the excavations he shall perform. To the Anunnaki in the Abzu relief shall come. So was Inki with enthusiasm saying with excitement his words came forth. Enlil at the words was hesitating. The matter is one of great importance. On our planet slavery has long ago been abolished. Tools are the slaves, not other beings. A new creature beforehand, non-existing, you wish to bring into being. Creation in the hands of the father of all beginning alone is held. So was Enlil in opposing, saying, stern were his words. Inki to his brother responded, not slaves, but helpers in my plan. The being already exists, Nimma was saying. To give more ability is the plan. Not a new creature, but one existing more in our image made, Inki with persuasion said. With little change, it can be achieved. Only a drop of our essence is needed. A grave matter it is. It is not to my liking, Enlil was saying. Against the rules of from planet to planet journeying, it is. By the rules to earth coming, it was forbidden. To obtain gold was our purpose. To replace the father of all beginning, it was not. After Enlil thus had spoken, Ninma was the one to respond. My brother... Nimma to Enlil was saying, With wisdom and understanding has the Father of all beginning us endowed. To what purpose have we been so perfected, else of it utmost us to make? With wisdom and understanding has the Creator of all, our life essence filled to whatever using of it we are capable, it is not that for which we have been destined? So was Nimba, words to her brother Enlil directing. With that, which in our essence was granted, tools and chariots we have perfected, mountains with terror weapons we shattered, skies with gold we are healing. So was Ninurta to her, his birth-giving mother saying, Let us with wisdom new tools fashion, not new beings create. 
Let by new equipments, not by slave beings, the toil be relieved. Where to our understanding does us lead to that which we have been destined? So was Ningazita saying, with Inki and Ninma he in agreement was. What knowledge we possess, its use cannot be prevented, Ningazita was saying. Destiny, indeed, cannot be altered. From the beginning to the end it has been determined. To them Enlil was thus saying, destiny it is, or fate it is. That to this planet us has brought to go from the water's foil, to put Anunnaki heroes to excavating toil, to a primitive worker create to be planning? That, my kinfolk, is the question. Thus with graveness Enlil was saying, is it destiny? Is it fate? That is what deciding requires. Is it from the beginning, ordained, or by us for choosing? To put the matter before Anu, they decided, Anu before the council the matter presented. The elders, the savants, the commanders were consulted. Long and bitter the discussions were of life and death, fate and destiny, words were spoken. Can there be another way the goal to obtain? Survival is in danger. If gold must be obtained, let the being be fashioned, the council decided. Let Anu forsake the rules of planetary journeys. Let Nibiru be saved. From Anu's palace, the decision to earth was beamed. It Inky delighted. Let Ninma, my helper, be of such matters understanding she has. Thus was Inky saying. At Ninma, with a longing, he was gazing. Let it so be, Ninma was saying. Let it so be, Enlil did say. By Anugi was the decision to the Anunnaki in the Abzu announced. Until the being is achieved, to the toil willingly you must return, he said. There was disappointment, rebellion there was not, to the toil the Anunnaki returned. In the house of life, in the Abzu, how to fashion the being Inki to Nimma was explaining. To a place among the trees Nimma he directed, a place of cages it was. In the cages there were odd creatures, their likes in the wild no one had seen. Four parts of one kind they had, hind parts of another creature they possessed. Creatures of two kinds by their essence combined to Ninma Inky was showing. To the house of life they returned, to a clean place with brightness shining they led her. In the clean place, Ningazita to Ninma the life essence secrets was explaining. How the essence from two kinds combined can be, he to her was showing. The creatures in the tree cages are too odd, monstrous they are, Ninma was saying. Indeed so, Inky responded, to attain perfection for that you are needed. How the essence is to combine, how much of this, how much of that to put together? In which womb, conception to begin, in which womb should the birth be given? For that your succor and healing understanding are needed. The understanding of one who gave birth, who a mother is, is required. A smile on the face of Ninma was, the two daughters that by Inky she mothered she well remembered. With Ningazita she surveyed the sacred formulas that on Mies were secreted. How this and that were done of him she required. The creatures in the tree cages she examined, the two-legged creatures she contemplated. By a male inseminating a female are the essences transmitted. The two entwined strands separate and combine an offspring to fashion. Let a male Anunnaki, a two-legged female, impregnate. Let a combination offspring be born, thus did Nima say. That we have tried, with failures it resulted, to her Inky responded. There was no conceiving, there was no birth. Now this is the account of how the primitive worker was created. How Inky and Ninma, with Ningazita assisting, the being fashioned. Another way the admixture of essences to attain must be tried, Ninma was saying. How the two strands of essences to combine another way must be found. That which from the earth is in the portion must not be harmed. To receive our essence in graduations it must be shaped. From the me formulas of Nibiru's essence only bit by bit could be attempted. In a crystal vessel Nimma an admixture was preparing. The oval of a female two-legged she gently placed. With me on a knocky seed containing she the oval impregnated. That oval back into the womb of the two-legged female she inserted. This time there was conceiving, a birth was indeed forthcoming. The allotted time for birth giving the leaders awaited. With anxious hearts they results were seeking. The allotted time arrived, there was no birth giving. In desperation Nimma a cutting made that which was conceived with tongs she drew out. 
A living being it was. With glee, Inky shouted. We attained, Ningazita with joy cried out. In her hands, Nimma the newborn held. With joy, she was not filled. Shaggy with hair all over was the newborn. His foreparts like of the earth creatures were. His hind parts to those of the Anunnaki more akin they were. They let the two-legged female, the newborn nurse, with her milk him to suckle. Fast was the newborn growing. What on Nibiru a day was, a month in the Abzu was. Taller the earth child grew. In the image of the Anunnaki he was not. His hands for tools were not suited. His speech only grunting sounds was. We must try once more, Nimba was saying. The admixture needs adjusting. Let me, the Mies, assay. With this or that me make the endeavor. With Inky and Ningazita assisting, they repeated the procedures. The essences in the Mies Nima carefully considered. One bit she took from one, one bit she took out from another. Then, in the crystal bowl, the oval of an earth female she inseminated. There was conception. At the appropriate time, there was birth giving. This one, more in the likeness of the Anunnaki, was. They let his birth mother him suckle. They let the newborn to a child grow. Appealing he was by his looks, his hands to hold tools were shapen, his senses they tested, they found there deficient. The earth child could not hear, his eyesight was faltered. Again and again, Nimma rearranged the admixtures of the me formulas, she took bits and pieces. One being had paralyzed feet, another his semen was dripping. One had trembling hands, a malfunctioning liver had another. One had hands too short to reach the mouth. One had lungs for breathing unsuited. Inky, by the results, was disappointed. A primitive worker is not attained to Mimma, he was saying. What is good or is bad in this being by trials, I am discovering, Ninma to Inky responded. To continue for success, my heart prompts me. Once more, an admixture she made. Once more, the newborn was deficient. Perchance, the shortfall is not in the admixture, Inky to her was saying. Perchance neither in the female's oval nor in the essences is the hindrance of what the earth itself is fashioned perchance that is what is missing not of nibiru's crystals use the vessel of the clay of earth make it so was inky with great wisdom possessed to nimma saying perchance what is earth's own admixture of gold and copper is required thus was inky he who knows things prompting her to use clay of the abzu in the house of life, Nimma made a vessel. Of the Absu's clay, she made it. As a purifying bath, she shaped the vessel within it to make the admixture. Gently into the clay vessel, the oval of an earth female, the two-legged she put, the life essence from an Anunnaki's blood extracted she in the vessel placed. By the me formulas was the essence directed. Bit by correct bit was it in the vessel added. Then, the oval thus fertilized into the womb of the earth female she inserted. There is conception, Nimmo with joy announced. The allotted birth-giving time they awaited. At the allotted time, the earth female began to travail. A child, a newborn, was forthcoming. With her hands, Nimmo the newborn extracted. A male it was. In her hands, she held the child. His image she examined. It was the image of perfection. In her hands, she held up the newborn. Inky and Ningazita were present. With joyful laughter, the three leaders were seized. Inky and Ningazita were backslapping. Nimma, Inky embraced and kissed. Your hands have made it, Inky with a gleaming eye to her was saying. They let the birth-giving mother the newborn suckle. Quicker than a child on Nibiru grows, he was growing. From month to month, the newborn progressed. From a baby to a child, he was becoming. His limbs for the task were suited, speech he knew not. Of speaking he had no understanding, grunts and snorts were his utterings. Inky, the matter was pondering, what was done each step and admixture he considered. Of all that we had tried and changed, one thing was never altered to Nimma, he was saying. Into the womb of the earth female the fertilized oval was always inserted. Perchance this is the remaining obstruction, thus was Inky saying. Nimma at Inky gazed, with bewilderment she him beheld. What in truth are you saying? Of him she an answer required. 
of the birth giving womb am I speaking to her Inky was responding of who the fertilized oval nurtures to birth giving carries in our image and after our likeness to be perchance an Anunnaki womb is required in the house of life there was silence words never before heard Inky was uttering they gazed at each other about what in each other's mind they were thinking wise are your words my brother Nimma at long last was saying perchance the right admixture in the wrong womb was inserted now where is the female among the Anunnaki her womb to offer perchance the perfect primitive worker to create perchance a monster in her belly to carry so was Nimba with a trembling voice saying let me of Ninki my spouse of that inquire Inki was saying let us her to the house of life summon the matter before her lay out he was turning to depart when Nimma put her hand on his shoulder. No, no, to Inky she was saying, the admixtures by me were made, reward and endangerment should be mine. I shall be the one the Anunnaki womb to provide for good or evil fate to face. Inky bowed his head, gently he embraced her. So be it to her, he said. In the clay vessel the admixture they made, the oval of an earth female with Anunnaki male essence they put together. The fertilized egg into the womb of Ninma by Inki was inserted. There was conception. The pregnancy by an admixture conceived. How long will it last to each other, they wondered. Will it be nine months of Nibiru? Will it be nine months of Earth? Longer than on Earth, quicker than on Nibiru, travail came. To a male child, Ninma birth was giving. Inki, the boy child, held in his hands the image of perfection he was. He slapped the newborn on his hind parts. The newborn uttered proper sounds. He handed the newborn to Nimma. She held him up in her hands. My hands have made it, victoriously, she shouted. Now this is the account of how Adamu by name was called, and how Tiamat as a counterpart female for him was fashioned. The newborn's visage and limbs the leaders carefully examined. Of good shape were his ears, his eyes were not clogged, his limbs were proper, hind parts like legs, four parts like hands were shaped, shaggy like the wild ones he was not, dark black his head hair was. Smooth was his skin, smooth as the Anunnaki skin it was, like dark red blood was its color, like the clay of the Abzu was its hue. They looked at his male hood, odd was it shaped, by his skin was its four parts surrounded, Unlike that of the Anunnaki male hood it was, a skin from its forepart was hanging. Let the earthling from us Anunnaki by this foreskin be distinguished, so was Inky saying. The newborn to cry was beginning. To her chest Ninma closely drew him. Her breast to him she gave, the breast he began to suckle. Perfection we did attain, Ningazita with elation was saying. Inky at his sister was gazing. A mother and son, not Ninma and a being he was seeing. A name will you give him, Inky required. A being he is, not a creature. Nimma cast her hand upon the newborn's body. With her fingers, his dark red skin she caressed. Adamu, I shall call him, Nimma was saying. One who like earth's clay is, that will be his name. For the newborn, Adamu, a crib they fashioned, in a corner of the house of life they placed him. A model for primitive workers we have indeed attained, Inky was saying. Now a host of workers like him are needed, Ningazita, his elders reminded. A model indeed he shall be, as for himself, like a firstling, he shall be treated. From toil he himself shall be protected, his essence alone as a mold shall be. So was Inky saying, by his decree, Nimma was greatly pleased. Whose wombs henceforth the fertilized ovals shall carry, Ningazita was asking. The leaders, the matter pondered, Nimma a solution offered. From her city, Shurabak, Ninma female healers summoned, the task required to them she explained. To the crib of Adamu she led them, the newborn earthling to perceive. To perform the task is not a commandment, Nimma to them was saying. Your own wish is the decision. Of the female Anunnaki assembled, seven stepped forward seven the task accepted let their names for all time be remembered Nimma to Inky was saying their task is heroic by them a race of primitive workers shall come into being the seven stepped forward each one her name was announcing 
the names Ningazita recorded, Nin Aima, Zuziana, Nin Mata, Nin Bera, Nin Mug, Musardu, and Nin Gunna. These were the names of the seven who by their own wish birth mothers were to be, earthlings in their wombs to conceive and bear, primitive workers to create. In seven vessels of the clay of the Abzu made, Nimba ovals of the two-legged females placed. The life essence of Adamu she extracted bit by bit in the vessels she it inserted. Then in the male part of Adamu, an incision she made, a drop of blood to let out. Let this a sign of life be, that flesh and soul have combined, let it forever proclaim. She squeezed the male part for blood, one drop of blood in each vessel to the admixture she added. In the clay's admixture, earthling with the Anunnaki shall be bound. Thus was Nimma saying, an incantation she was pronouncing. To a unity shall the two essences, one of heaven, one of earth, together be brought. That which is of earth, and that which is from Nibiru by a blood kinship shall be bonded. So was Nimma pronouncing. Her words, Ningazita, also recorded. In the wombs of the birth-giving heroines, the fertilized ovals were inserted. Their tease conception with anticipation was the allotted time counted. At the allotted time, birth givings were occurring. At the allotted time, seven male earthlings were born. Their features were proper. Good sounds they were uttering. By the heroines they were suckled. Seven primitive workers had been created, Ningazita was saying. Let the procedure be repeated. Seven more the toil to undertake. My son, to him, Inky was saying, not even seven by seven sufficient shall be. Of heroin healers too much is required, for ever their task this way shall be. Indeed, the task is too demanding, glow beyond enduring it is, Nimma to their said. Female ones we have to fashion, Inky was saying, for male counterparts to be. Let them know each other, as one flesh the two to become. Let them by themselves procreate, on their own the child birthing make. To primitive workers by themselves give birth, Anunnaki females to relieve. The me formulas you must change, from male to female adjustment make, so did Inki to Ningazita say. For a counterpart to Adamu to be fashioned, in the womb of an Anunnaki female conception is needed, so did Ningazita to his father Inki in responding, saying, Let me this time Ninki my spouse summon, with strong voice he said, If she is willing, let her the mold for the female earthling create. They to the Abzu, to the house of life, Nikki summoned. They showed her Adamu all that matters to her, they explained. Of the task that is required, they gave explanations of success and danger to her, an account gave. By the task, Nikki was fascinated. Let it be done, she to them said. By the me formulas, Ningazita adjusting made. By the admixture was an oval fertilized. Into the womb of his spouse, Inky, it inserted. With much care, he did it. There was conception. In the allotted time, Ninki was in travail. A birth there was not. Ninki, the months counted. Nimma, the months counted. The tenth month, a month of evil fate, they began to call. Ninma, the lady whose hand wombs has opened, with a cutter an incision made. Her head was covered, on her hands protections she wore. With dexterity the opening she made, her face at once was brightened. That which in the womb was from the womb came forth. A female, a female birth was given to Nikki with joy, she shouted. The newborn's visage and limbs they carefully examined. Of good shape were her ears, her eyes were not clogged, her limbs were proper, hind parts like legs, four parts like hands were shaped. Shaggy she was not, like beach sands was the hue of her head hair. Her skin smooth was, as that of the Anunnaki in smoothness and color it was. Ninma, the girl held in her hands, she slapped her hind parts. Proper sounds the newborn uttered. To Ninki, the spouse of Inki, she the newborn handed, to be suckled, nourished, and raised. A name will you give her, Inki of his spouse inquired. A being she is, not a creature. In your image she is, and after your likeness. Perfectly she is fashioned, a model for female workers you have attained. Ninki cast her hand upon the newborn's body. With her fingers, her skin, she caressed. Tiamat, let her name be, the mother of life, Ninki was saying. 
like the planet of old of which the earth and the moon were fashioned, let her be called. From her womb's life essences other birth givers shall be molded. To a multitude of primitive workers she thereby life will be giving, thus was Ninki saying, the other's words of concurring uttered. Now this is the account of Adamu and Tiamat in the Eden, and how they knowing of procreation were given and to the Absu expelled. After Tiamat in the womb of Ninki was fashioned, in seven vessels of the clay of the Absu made Nimma ovals of the two-legged females placed. The life essence of Tiamat she extracted, bit by bit in the vessels she it inserted. In the vessels of the clay of the Abzu made, Nimma the admixture formed, incantations as the procedure befits she was uttering. In the wombs of the birth-giving heroines the fertilized ovals were inserted. There was conception at the allotted time birth-giving were occurring. At the allotted time seven female earthlings were born. Their features were proper, good sounds they were uttering, thus were seven female counterparts for the primitive workers created. Seven male and seven female did the four leaders create them. After the earthlings were thus created, let the males the females inseminate, let the primitive workers by themselves offspring beget. So was Inky to the others, saying, After the allotted time, offsprings, other offspring, will beget. Plentiful will be the primitive workers' numbers, the toil of the Anunnaki they shall hear. Inki and Ninki, Ninma and Ningazita were joyful, the fruits elixir they were drinking. For the semen and seven cages they made, among the trees they placed them. Let them together grow up, malehoods and femalehoods attain. Let the males the females inseminate, let them by themselves offspring beget. So were they to each other, saying, as for Adamu and Tiamat, from the toil of the excavations they shall be protected. Let us them to the Eden being over, to the Anunnaki therein our handiwork display. So was Inki to the others, saying, with that the others did concur. To Iridu, in the Eden, the city of Inki, Adamu, and Tiamat were taken. An abode in an enclosure for them was built, to roam therein they could. The Anunnaki of the Eden came to see them, from the landing place they came. Enlil came to see them, by the sight his displeasure was diminished. Ninurta came to see them, Ninlil did as well. From the way station on Lemu, Marduk, the son of Inki, also came down to see. It was a sight most astounding, a wonder of wonders it was to behold. Your hands have made it, the Anunnaki to the fashioners were saying. The Agigi, who between earth and Lamu shuttled, were also all agog. Primitive workers have been fashioned, our days of toil to end, so were they all saying. In the Abzu, the newborns were growing, for the maturing the Anunnaki were anticipating. Inki was the supervisor, Ninma and Ningazita also came. In the excavations, the Anunnaki were grumbling, patience to impatience gave way. Inugi, their overseer of in Inki, was often inquiring, for primitive workers the outcry he conveyed. The circuits of earth grew in number, maturity of the earthlings was overdue. No conceiving among the females was observed, there was no birth giving. By the cages among the trees Ningazita a couch of grass for himself made. Day and night the earthlings he was watching, their doings to ascertain. Indeed, he saw them mating, the males, the females were inseminating, conceiving there was not, birth giving there was not. Inky the matter deeply pondered, the creatures once combined he contemplated. None, not one of them, had offspring begotten. By two kinds combined, a curse had been created, Inky to the others said. Let us, the essences of Adamu and Tiamat, a fresh examine, Ningazita was saying. Their mees, bit by bit, to be studied, what is wrong to ascertain. In Shurabak, in the House of Healing, the essences of Adamu and Tiamat were contemplated. With the essence of Anunnaki males and females they were compared. Like two entwined serpents, Ningazita, the essences separated. Arranged like twenty-two branches on a tree of life were the essences. Their bits were comparable. The images and likenesses they properly determined. Twenty-two they were in number, the ability to procreate they did not include. Another two bits of the essence in the Anunnaki pr present and then Gazeta to the others showed. One male, one female, without them there was no procreating, so was he to them explaining. 
in the molds of Adamu and Tiamat in the combining, they were not included. Nimma heard this and was distraught. With frustration was Inky seized. The clamor in the Abzu is great. Mutiny is again in the making, so was Inky to them, saying. Primitive workers must be procured lest the gold extracting shall be ceasing. Ningazita in these matters learned a solution was proposing. To his elders, Inky and Ninma, in the house of healing, he whispered. They all, the heroines who Ninma were assisting, sent away. They locked the door behind them, the three with the two earthlings alone remaining. Upon the four others, Ningazita a deep sleep caused to descend. The four he made unfeeling. From the rib of Inky, the life essence he extracted. In the rib of Adamu, the life essence of Inky he inserted. From the rib of Ninma, the life essence he extracted. Into the rib of Tiamat, the life essence he inserted. Where the incisions were made, the flesh thereon he closed up. Then the four of them by Ningazita were awakened. It is done, he proudly declared. To their tree of life, two branches have been added. With procreating power, their life essences are now entwined. Let them freely roam as one flesh let thorn knots each other, Nimma was saying. In the Eden's orchards, to freely roam, Adamu and Tiamat were placed. Of their nakedness they became aware. Of malehood and femalehood they were knowing. Tiamat of leaves, aprons made, from the wild beast to be distinguished. In the heat of the day, Enlil in the orchard was strolling, the shade he was enjoying. Without expectation, Adamu and Tiamat he encountered. The aprons on their loins he had noticed. What is the meaning of this, Enlil wondered, Inky for explaining, he summoned. The matter of procreation, Inky to Enlil explained. The seven and seven had failed to Enlil, he admitted. Ningazita, the life essence, examined an additional combining was needed. Great was Enlil's anger. Furious his words were. The whole thing was not to my liking, for acting as creators I had opposed. The being that we need, it already exists, so were you, Inky, saying. All we need is put our mark on it, thereby primitive workers to fashion. Healing heroines themselves put at risk, Ninma and Ninki were endangered. To no avail it was all, your handiwork was a failure. Now the last bits of our life essence to these creatures you have given. To be like us in procreation knowing, perchance our life cycles on them to bestow. Thus did Enlil with angry words speak. Inky, Nimma, and Ningazita summoned with words Enlil to pacify. My lord Enlil, Ningazita was saying, knowing for procreation they were given, the branch of long living to their essence tree was not. Ninma then spoke up to her brother Enlil, she was saying, What was the choice, my brother, to end it all in failure, Nibiru in doom to face its fate? Or to try, and try, and try, and by procreation let earthlings the toil undertake. Then let them be where they are needed, Enlil with anger said, to the Abzu, away from the Eden, let them be expelled.